According to the official figures, over the past 10 years, Drayton Manor Park has welcomed over half a million visitors to its special festive event. Despite being seasoned theme park attendees, we would not actually been to Drayton Manor before, so this was an entirely new experience for us. When we entered the park, we headed straight for a very wintry looking Thomas Land, with a gorgeous dusting of artificial snow and twinkling Christmas lights everywhere. Thomas was even sporting a bright red nose for the occasion. With only part of the park open, Thomas Land is without doubt the main ride area, and with a two and six year old, this suited us very well. During the Christmas event, there isn't a lot for the real adrenaline junkies, with the biggest ride being Accelerator. My six year old and I did manage to enjoy a couple of rides on this though, as the queues here and throughout the day were never longer than 15 minutes and were often under five. The team at Drayton Manor really deserve credit for the effort they put into the decorations. They've created a tremendous seasonal atmosphere throughout Thomas Land, and the attention to detail is very impressive. Once you're ready for a break from the ride, you can enjoy the impressive 15 acre zoo area which apparently contains over 750 different animals. This provided a nice distraction from the hustle and bustle of the busier Thomas Land, watching the crazy tiger monkey and seeing the tigers being fed were particular highlights for us all. As you head through the zoo area, you'll come across the impressive Dinosaur Park. If you've been to West Midland Safari Park, this will probably be a little disappointing as this was only static, silent dinosaur models. However, the kids still very much enjoyed walking around and trying to answer the various dinosaur trivia questions scattered about. Right alongside the dinosaur trail is Spencer's outdoor play area, a really nice wooden play structure with plenty for the kids to do to burn off some steam. Walk a little further and you'll reach an old penny arcade opposite the train station which will take you straight back to Thomas Land. Before you do, be sure to check out the other animals around here, Terence's driving school and the impressive Thomas the Tank Engine model railway, which is surely a mandatory requirement for a Thomas themed park. For us, the main event, the visit to Santa Claus, was made all that more special by starting off with a train journey on Thomas himself back to Knapford Station in Thomas Land. This train journey really showed off how much effort they have put into making Thomas Land feel like a true winter wonderland. Not having been before, I can imagine it would feel particularly peculiar going back to Drayton Manor when it's not set up like this as it feels so right, it's like Thomas Land was made for Christmas. From Thomas Land it was a short walk to the Castle of Dreams for our scheduled time slot with Santa. We didn't feel rushed in any way and Santa took the time to talk to each child before presenting them with a gift and then giving the whole family a chance to pose for a photo. The gifts were a storybook, my visit to Santa at Drayton Manor Park, a golden ticket, which is actually just a voucher for a child goes free with a full priced adult for the 2018 season, and a chocolate lolly, which went down particularly well with the children. Heading into the evening as the cold descends and the lights go down, the park begins to feel even more festive. The rides continue to run, so we're able to enjoy these with even shorter queues as some families have chosen to head home early. Probably the biggest disappointment was the parade, which was actually more like a strolling show. Having seen the parades at Disney, I was probably coming from an unfair starting point, but this part just felt very disorganised and awkward. The parade starts in Thomas Land at the airport, and then guests must follow the performers, about six people, from there along the parade line through Thomas Land, along the waterfront until it reaches its finish point just 30 minutes later. As you can imagine, the crowds got bigger and the story was harder to follow the further you go along. It was a shame because you can see they really put some thought into it, but it didn't go well. The parade did provide us with a top tip though, which is to take your place outside the front of the train station where the trains turn. Without spoiling the show, this will guarantee you get to experience the wonderful snowstorm at least once during your visit. The evening concludes at the end of the parade with a really nice firework display over the water. It was a little on the short side, running at about three minutes in total, but it rounded off the day nicely and it was getting really cold by that point, so we were glad to be heading back to the warmth of our car after a thoroughly enjoyable day. Wow.